Well, that's a nice cheery gospel, don't you think? <laughs> Today is the second to last Sunday of this liturgical year, but it's the last Sunday for us to hear the gospel of Luke and the public ministry of Jesus as Luke lays it out for us. And we just heard Jesus' final talk to his disciples, and it took place just a little bit before he entered into his passion. They were on the Mount of Olives, and from there they could all see the temple, and the view of it was amazing and inspiring. Some of the disciples were so taken with it when they saw it, its beauty from a distance that they were moved by it, and so they spoke of it to Jesus. And Jesus, not to spoil the moment, but because his time was growing very, very short, said, you see that temple over there? Not one stone is going to be left on top of another. And the disciples then asked him when that might be and what the signs would be before it happened. And so Jesus told them what would happen before the temple was destroyed. And in doing so, he painted a picture of a time of great tribulation, wars and famines and plagues and conflicts between nations and even signs in the heavens. And Jesus warned his disciples to be alert, and he told them that they themselves would face persecution and that they would take place sometime after his passion, death, and resurrection. And in fact, in the year 70 AD, the Romans came and destroyed the city of Jerusalem. And along with it, they destroyed the temple and tore it to the ground. It was a terrible period, and Christians were persecuted and many were killed, but Jesus told them not to be afraid because he himself would provide them wisdom because this would be a time for them to provide necessary testimony about God. And he was again telling them to have faith in him. Well, the church has always taught that while Jesus's prophecy does refer to the period between Jesus' death and the time of the Roman destruction of Jerusalem, Jesus was also speaking about the end times when Jesus will return for the final judgment, which the church says will have very strong similarities to the last days of Jerusalem, although on a much larger scale. We hear echoes of this in our first reading from Malachi today. And he prophesies the end of the world and the destruction of evil and the healing of the just. Malachi says that there will be a blazing fire that will consume whatever opposes the will of God. But that's the final result of the last judgment and Malachi's prophecy does not address the events leading up to it. <clears throat> and our readings make a certain sense now that we're at the end of the liturgical year because we're gearing up to start looking in a couple of weeks with anticipation to the celebration of the first coming of Jesus at Christmas. And so it's appropriate that the church also wants to focus on the end times, the final judgment and the second coming of Jesus at the end of time, as well as the end of the world and its renewal in a new heaven and a new earth. And we all have a stake in that. And the church's mission is souls for Christ when he comes again. So that's why we look at it today. Now, I don't think, I don't know how you think and feel about it, but there are times when I think about the end of the world and the final judgment. And for me, anyway, I sometimes look at it with a certain level of fear and queasiness. It's difficult to adequately think about God coming to judge each one of us, much less the entire world, without being overwhelmed. But our scriptures today encourage us and counsel us that that's not how we should respond to God's coming judgment. On the contrary, Jesus himself says that we should not be terrified because not only will he provide for us to act and speak in wisdom, when that time comes, but ultimately he promises that our lives will not be lost. And he's telling us to have faith in him. And again, Malachi in our first reading in talking about the final judgment, and he says that those who love God will be healed by God. 
In other words, scripture is telling us that those who love God should rejoice that he's coming and that he will judge with righteousness and justice. And that's a very, very good thing when you stop to consider how often in our world the judgment occurs, but without justice. When Jesus comes again, he's going to set all things right. Still, he paints a very dark picture for those who will be living in those future times. And remember, we do not know when that's all going to happen. He tells us that we can expect trials and imprisonment and betrayal by family members and close friends. He's telling us that, he's telling us that as much as we want our relationship to remain private, it's not a purely private or personal thing because our relationship with God always involves our fellow human beings. And of course, that isn't always an easy thing for us to do. So while we don't know when the end will come, let me just say a couple of things about what that might look like. Nobody can say exactly what's going to happen in those days, but Jesus offers some clues and is telling us not to be terrified and that he will be there for us. And because Jesus says it, we should take great consolation and encouragement in his words. It was Mother Teresa who said that the Lord does not call us to be successful, but to be faithful. And clearly, the Lord does want us to be faithful in the middle of what might appear to be total failure. And that's because it's very tempting to lose faith when our relationship with the Lord seems to bring more grief than joy. But faithful is what we are called to be and I suspect quite strongly that many of us are far more faithful than we realize or understand. And I say that because of what I've seen and it's probably easiest for us to see that situation with those who are parents and grandparents. Though it's not just parents, but anyone who is committed to other family members or to a particular community or to particular ministries. Many folks have commitments with two or all three of these connections. And I see it here at St. Charles all the time. And I also saw it at my former parish and with all kinds of people. And while it's most everybody I see around here, I think we can all connect with the idea of parents or fellow family members and their intense commitment to others in the family almost constantly and at great cost to the ones who are committed to another person or persons whom they're serving. These are people, and my bet is that you may likely be one of them, who give and give and give for the health and support and the betterment of another. In the case of parents, there's a lack of sleep, getting up at all hours, sometimes maybe working in thankless, low-paying, tedious, and dead-end jobs, all with, the all with the mission of serving another person. It's long-term and patient endurance. There are house payments and car payments and heating and electricity, not to mention food and clothing, all at tremendous personal expense. And yet, the mission of, of supporting another person continues whether it's family or a community or a ministry, these folks endure all for the sake of others. They're faithful. And while it's a feature of this age to moan and groan, these kinds of folks typically do not see themselves as victims. And even though they may be tempted from time to time to walk away or to give up or to take an extended break, they continue to persevere because they're faithful. And so when Jesus promises to provide the resources to withstand the hostility that's, that, that will be experienced, we should take him at his word. He will be faithful to us 
because he is faithful now. And he'll be faithful to us then because we are faithful now. Faithfulness and endurance, that's what he asks of us. And it's his faithfulness to us in very difficult times that will make our faithfulness in those times possible. And the bottom line for him is love. And while we, we don't fully understand or appreciate sometimes why things are the way they are, his eternal love will be there for us always, regardless of whatever else may be around us. We just have to continue to be faithful and to trust in him.